The time for cellular technologies for advanced water metering and more is right now. We are about to learn more about the economic, operational, and customer benefits of deploying cellular networks for better managing water resources. And here to tell us more is Brett Kaffenberger from ITRON. So Brett, I'm not gonna take up any more of the time. I want you to be able to present in as much time as possible, so take it away. All right, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone's doing well this morning. Um, yeah, we're gonna go through uh, and talk a little bit about cellular. Obviously, there's, there's a lot of different ways to pull data back. Uh, a lot of vendors doing a lot of different things, including iTron. So, but this morning, we're gonna really kind of focus in on cellular and why, you know, why, why now we're really talking about cellular? Why are we just now, this is becoming more prevalent, more accepted within our industry? So just real briefly, a little bit about me. My name is Brett Koffenberger. I've been in the industry over 20 years with uh, companies dating back to Schlumberger and uh, Elster, Mueller, and now ITRON. Uh, I'm also on the AWWA committee for metering. So anyway, I've uh, been in the industry a while and dealt with various uh, technologies from various vendors. Um, so I'd like to spend a little bit of this time going over cellular with you. So just real quickly, uh, a little bit about uh, iTron. So for those of you that don't know, we have over 8,000 customers in 100 different countries. We are a global company, over 2 billion in uh, global revenue, uh, 200 million devices uh, connected and under gas, water, and electric. And uh, the most important one on here is really the 21.5 million water modules deployed. And it's actually over 22 million at this point, but that is really all in North America. That 22 million is, is uh, all installed in North America, 95% of which are in pits. So been around a long time and installed a lot of different uh, endpoints over the years, learned the right way to do it, the wrong way to do it, and learn from there. And I think we've uh, done a good job perfecting that up to this point. So. Okay, so talking a little bit about cellular. Why cellular? Why now? Cellular's been around um, for some time. Uh, some some cellular or some other uh, AMI vendors have been actually selling the technology for probably better close to ten years on the water side. We at iTron have been doing it for over fifteen years on our on our electric side, dating back to two G, three G, and up to where we are today. So. Um, there's obviously been there's pros and cons with any type of technology, and at iTron we offer different different versions of uh, technology, uh, whether it's RF or um, or cellular, and other vendors do the same. So there's not a really a right or wrong way; it just depends on what best fits your application. But we feel moving forward that cellular is uh, has a lot of benefit and value add. <clears throat> so, talk a little bit about the value proposition. So. Obviously, with cellular, we don't have any towers. We don't have any infrastructure. All that is already up. It's all uh, cellular uh, carrier carrier grade technology. Essentially, what it is is built on the back of existing cell phone networks. It is uh, uh, dedicated for machine to machine, so that data does not affect that data passing of uh, passing of the data does not affect uh, the cell phone network. Um, <clears throat> And it's already up. It's already in place, and it's already very a dense network. Obviously, your cell phones you may lose it for a few minutes, depending on when you're when you're traveling or if you're in a certain difficult area. But for the most part, your cellular comes in pretty strong. Um, it's very flexible, very flexible and scalable, easy to deploy. It doesn't have to be deployed by route, obviously, because the, you don't have to wait for infrastructure. Um, you can deploy as needed, so you can scale down to, you know, 100 endpoints up to hundreds of thousands. Um, it can be used as an augmentation uh, to an existing network. Most providers will, or most uh, AMI vendors will have that data come back to a common platform. So what you could do is you could have, uh, if you have a hard to reach area where you it doesn't make sense to put up a, a, a collector or a tower or a repeater or whatever in a specific area, you could simply put a handful of these in and you could bring that data back just as easily. So it's very, very good to scale down and augment or for CNI meters where you don't wanna put up a full network, 
Obviously, CNI meters are very important to revenue. So you could put these in on your CNI meters and then deploy AMI as needed. Or, or you could stay AMR if you have that today as well. So very flexible, and you could do 100% cellular deployment. Uh, that's uh, it, It's really unlimited as far as the applications. And, and a lot of the third-party devices, or I would call them value-add devices, such as pressure, uh, water quality, di different devices like that are typically running on cellular anyway. So this is, it's really nothing new. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, and it's fu future focus. Well, if, if you remember a couple years ago, uh, we had the shutdown of 3G. So, you know, all the uh, carriers sent out notices saying, hey, we're shutting down these 3G networks and you're going to have to upgrade your device. Well, now it's it's been made possible so that these new new technology with LTM, CAD M1, these new technologies, they're forward looking, meaning if the, the, regardless of what type of technology the customer go, or the vendor, sorry, the provider goes to moving forward, whether it's 6G or whatever that is, this is compatible. You wouldn't have to go back and change this out like what, what we saw with 3G. Okay, but again, how do we how do we get to this point? What are what are some of the reasons why what you know cellular's been around a while? We didn't we weren't moving forward with this as a as an industry uh, until fairly recently, I'd say within the last couple of years. And and there were some challenges. You know, there's there was challenges with first of all with the cost. So cellular modems were expensive. Um, and everybody that, that has installed some type of AMR, AMI knows roughly what you pay for those endpoints. And those endpoints have to last 20 years. That's the expectation in our industry. So these, these cellular modems were very expensive previously. Um, and they pulled a lot of power. Typically, you would see five to 10 years battery life on typical applications with this, with a cellular endpoint in our industry. And, and, excuse me, we, we knew that that just wouldn't work because everything's really based around that 20 years. Um, improved coverage in order to be able to just do a widespread uh, cellular uh, campaign, if you will, to where, you know, that is your go-to-market solution. You, you know, we need to make sure that the network is, is in place and the network can support, you know, coast to coast can support these type of deployments and, and have redundancy in the network in case one endpoint or one cellular tower, you have a communication problem, you can be picked up by another cellular tower. So really the density and the coverage of the cellular networks. And then in addition to that, we don't want to, we don't want the interference of the cell phones. Right. So it has to be had to be de really dedicated to that machine to machine data traffic. Uh, higher efficiency, uh, higher capacity um, So being able to transmit data a lot quicker, uh, a lot more efficient back to back and forth over the uh, cellular carrier. And then I mentioned the, the planned evolution, essentially, that's that, that technology that is in place that allows us to move forward with whatever the carriers move to without going back and changing all those endpoints out. <clears throat> okay, so there's a standard standards by called 3GPP and ITU. So essentially what what's happened is they've gotten together and said, okay, if, if we're going to support these hundreds of millions of of devices over over cellular you know what what do we have to do to make this more applicable more beneficial and more cost effective and not cost prohibitive uh to be able to support these type of applications like like an ami and essentially you know they they got together and said all right well we need to have lower power consumption so what you have what you see now in the um LTM and, and MBIOT as well. And MBIOT is, a, is, is another one as well. But you typically see that more in Europe and uh, Asia Pacific area. Than, and it's been a, LTM has been adopted more in North America. But nonetheless, it, it is the power consumption. So 
they put standards in place to, to ensure that now these cellular modems and the way these, this traffic is sent back and forth and modulated and sent back and forth over the network, it reduces the amount of power that these things require. So by reducing the amount of power, we increase the battery life. You know, and now it's, 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 it's much more efficient and it's easy to offer that 20-year uh, battery that our industry expects. The enhanced coverage. So the networks or the network providers have essentially got together. You know, you got your ATT, Verizon, T-Mobile, essentially built those networks out to support all this additional machine to machine data traffic. And it's essentially built onto the existing cell towers. And obviously they've added towers to support it, but it's really built onto the back of those cell phone carriers or the cell phone towers but it's really dedicated to this traffic, to this machine to machine traffic. So now we don't have to worry about, um, uh, we don't have to worry about collisions. We don't have to worry about uh, overwhelming the, the cell phone network. If, if there was some type of uh, emergency or catastrophe, catastrophe, God forbid, then, you know, what you typically see is, you know, the cell phone traffic goes way up and it gets it gets uh, the cell phone gets bogged down. And well, essentially the data traffic wouldn't would be unaffected by that. And then the lower cost complexity. So just the modems themselves, the cellular modems that, you know, I'd say probably five, six years ago used to go in these devices were were very expensive. Uh, they were very expensive. And like I said, they used a lot of power. So. One of the things that's happened now is these modems have come down in, in price and are essentially a fraction of what they used to be. And the same way with the data collection. So where in the past, just you know, doing traditional AMI for the last 20 plus years, you know, the, the backhaul from a, your typical gateway, you know, could be a couple hundred bucks uh, for that actual backhaul fee. Well, now it's 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 just fractions of that. I mean, it's very low, very low amount of money. So your typical endpoint is 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 much less, you know, than a, a buck. It's less than that. So <clears throat> it's it's come down considerably. And at, at this point, you know, we we have felt like it's it you know it it makes the most sense to offer a solution like this to our customers, in addition to other RF, which we still have. Uh, but it, it provides really what it does. It provides a flexibility financially as well. So for a utility that is is more, I would say, CapEx averse or OpEx averse, well, if you have capital money and you're looking at cellular, well, you don't have the infrastructure. So you don't have to pay for that infrastructure up front. But what you can do is you could pay for that cellular uh, connectivity over time. So you could pay for it, say, say 10 years in advance and you lock in that rate for for 10 years with with the capital money you have and if you don't have capital money and you're more opex uh, friendly then you can deploy slowly over time and build as needed or build you know as as things fail you you put these in and you and you move at your own speed and you don't have to have that large capital investment to put that large network in to to cover everything within your network And that's the end of my presentation. Brett, well, thank you very much. Very informative. We covered a lot of ground there uh, rather quickly. And I, I think that uh, a lot of what you shared with the audience was, was beneficial. And I certainly appreciate you giving us your time this morning. So thank you very much. If thank there's uh, any questions from our audience, again, uh, you can find Brett's email address on the left-hand side of your screen where we have the list of, of speakers for the day. Uh, also, if you wanted uh, some more information, you can visit them at itron.com slash NA. And uh, Brett, thank you very much.